Dr. Funk, um, I'm just wondering if you could give me maybe a percentage of the patients that opt for lifestyle diet and opt out of perhaps radiation or any invasiveness um, and what their success is in dealing with uh, a breast cancer? When it's recommended, right? Because it's not always recommended. When people kind of buck the conventional, like you really should be radiating or doing chemo based on what we know. I would say in my practice, remember I attract people who are bent that way. Um, I would say 20% of people don't do quote unquote what is recommended to do. And so far in my experience, those who are really aggressive tumors um, and triple negative is what I'm thinking of and the HER2 positive, about 30% of those who don't take the therapy that they really needed for having a very aggressive tumor um, end up recurring either locally in the breast from a lack of radiation or out there in the body from not doing the chemo. Do you, do you think that um, they weren't adhering to perhaps, you know, a rigorous lifestyle change uh, that maybe their efforts weren't as uh, forceful as perhaps they could have been if maybe they had greater support or they were a little bit more uh, educated on how to go about it? What, what do you think? Possibly in a few, but I would say largely it's the biology of the cancer. So like the people who are successful at staving off a recurrence, oftentimes it is from their efforts, but they also had like the perfect storm brewing because they had a very estrogen dominant tumor that divided slowly. So if you eat anti-estrogenically in the tumor with that kind of bombardment of these uh, anti-estrogen foods taking away its fuel would never have occurred until you were 185 years old boom, you get to say you cured your cancer, right? Um, but did you, if you lived to 200? So I, it's, it, I haven't done that detailed level of um, analysis on the patients who don't do recommended therapy to answer you accurately. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Joe. Denise, would you like to ask a question or where are you from? Ah, yes, I would love to. I love this informative panel so much. I'm from Tucson, and I'm actually a whole food plant-based educator with retirement programs. Here's my question. It's on casein. I was a vegetarian for 30 plus years, and I watched Forks Over Knives when I was 60. And when I heard of Dr. Campbell's belief that casein could promote cancer, I was a 100% plant-based eater the very next day, and I've now been that for 10 years. Um, and Dr. Funk, when I read your wonderful book, I think that I might have read in there that you didn't think that casein um, had an effect on breast cancer. Perhaps I'm remembering wrong, but I wondered if you could address that because I've been always thinking since you know forks over knives, and then you know following Dr. Campbell for all these years that casein could be a promoter of cancer. So I was wondering if maybe, maybe both of you could address that. You wanna go first, Dr. Campbell? Yeah, I think um, certainly in some experimental models, namely my, my dad's experimental models, looking at uh, liver cancer in rats uh, with, with uh, liver cancer initiated by a carcinogen, casein was a cancer promoter. Um, so does that apply to all cancers or humans? Um, you know, there's a lot of leaps there and which we both would admit, uh, both him and I. Um, if you look at some of the surrounding evidence though, for example, on, um, on dairy, you know, if you increase your dairy intake, I mean, they did this study, they just did nothing else, but told people to increase their dairy intake. And uh, lo and behold, their IGF-1 went up and IGF-1 is a growth factor. <clears throat> it can be a uh, elevated IGF-1 is a risk factor for various cancers. So you start getting these indirect things, um, but it's not, it, it, you know, again, it goes back to this question of does a single uh, food item or component or ingredient, do we know for sure exactly what it does? No, uh, we don't. Um, you know, there's some observational studies showing, for example, that, uh, 
that that milk intake can be protective and colon protective and colon cancer. So um, you know it's not uh, it, it's not a slam dunk in terms of the, you know the overall dietary pattern matters more than casein. I, I would say to you though, if you've been a strict whole food plant based diet, what, why would you go back to dairy? I I, I wouldn't um, you know just be maybe because you miss cheese or something. I I if that's if that if that that's an assumption. You didn't say this, but. If, if that was a thought, I would, I would uh, say, wait a minute, there's, there's enough um, sort of indir indirect evidence to, to say that um, is unnecessary. So, yeah, I do think maybe you're misremembering in the book. The only time I talk about casein is to talk, to mention that it is 80% of the protein comprised of milk and that it takes 10 pounds of milk to make one pound of cheese. So you've got this like ooey gooey considerably uh, caloric and high fat ball of delicious goo, depending on who you are. Um, and uh, that's when I talked about case and that was the only time and I didn't talk about it as specifically as a cancer promoter. However, what are you gonna find it in? You're gonna find it uh, in these milk-based products and one study, LACE, Life After Cancer Epidemiology Study, followed um, 2,200 early stage breast cancer patients for about 10 years. And they found that those breast cancer patients eating one or more daily servings of high fat, not low fat, dairy, increased their all cause mortality by 49% versus those consuming less than half a serving per day. So it's often what the casein's in and then, you know, the whole meal itself that involves the casein that might be um, to your health detriment. But no, I don't. I didn't talk about casein as a direct link to cancer promotion. And now, can I add one more thing? I'll add that um, with dairy and casein, because you know, I've been my brain is thinking breast cancer because what I've been doing in this conversation obviously is more breast cancer. But there is perhaps if you're going to look at the health effects of one single food or one sing small food group on cancer. In my opinion, there's perhaps no greater connection between a, a, a dietary component and cancer than there is between dairy and prostate cancer and dairy being a bad actor. And you see that um, with enough consistency and enough times that, and you start putting all these things together, um, you know, whether, whether it's casein is, is automatically, um, you know, the bad actor or not, uh, yeah, I think obviously as a scientific statement, you've got to have some conservative understanding of that and cautious assessment of that. But, uh, but yeah, I certainly wouldn't recommend it. James, would you like to ask a question or where are you from? Yes, thank you very much. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. And I just uh, direct this to Dr. Campbell. Uh, I loved your father's book, um, uh, just very inspirational. Um, a, a cancer survivor, mental cell lymphoma seven years ago. Um, I saw I read your dad's book and I've been whole food plant based almost four years. Also went gluten free. Just want to get your right. Any any other thoughts of anything else I could be doing, eating tree bark or anything else that might help? <laughs> um, it sounds like you're doing a great job. You know, um, it, again, you get into uh, specific cancers yeah, and cancer go. types and and uh, stages and stuff. And we and unfortunately, this is a great now. frustration. You know, this this actually. Um, it, 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 research has been proposed for dietary therapy for cancer. And my dad has uncovered this. We did it, our family was, while well, he was on a sabbatical in Oxford, he would go to these old um, libraries and look up some of the original stuff. And, and it's in his book, The Future of Nutrition, which is wonderful. Um, and he talked about some of this past stuff. And, and you know, it was, it's been hundreds of years that physicians have said, you know, hey, wait a minute, these people eating this diet seem to be doing a little better. They seem to be a little healthier. Let's go ahead and do a study. Let's, let's see if you take cancer patients and put them on this diet, um, what will happen? And, and do you know what? It just, it just it hasn't been done with the exception of a few dietary studies that make small changes to a Western diet. And that's not the type of research that excites me. So um, it's greatly frustrating. I think you know, based on the, on the research I know and the indirect evidence, you know, go for it with what you're doing. Um, you know, it, 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 in general, I would recommend that for people struggling with a, with a diagnosis. Uh, certainly um, in terms of, you know, specific diet stuff. I mean, that's, I, I have, when I give specific 
personal recommendations. I look at food diaries and I go over food diaries and I, um, you know, go through the medical history and talk about all that stuff. So, um, you know, for, for a very specific personal recommendation, maybe there's some tweaks or something, but you're, but, you know, I think the general approach of a whole food plant-based diet sounds weird.